you just tell us your name and how old you are? All right. <clears throat> I'm uh, Colt Lundy, and I'm 15 years old. And the minute you say 15 years old, Colt, it makes people wonder, what's it feel like to be 15 and be in a place like this? It's uh, overwhelming just to know that, like you, there's people in here that can be like my grandpa. So it's really quite odd most of the time because everybody calls me youngin' and I'm always treated like, well, I'm like a little kid. Did you think at all about what it would be like when you came in here, before you came in here, like when you were in jail or when you were in court? Did you ever once think about being in an adult prison? Yeah, I knew it was a possibility that they might send me to an adult, like in the population. But then I found out that I was going to come here to a juvenile section. So, I mean, I knew I couldn't really control where I went, so I just, I thought it was going to be a little hard, but most people told me it would, it would be all right. Do you remember that drive, that the day that they were bringing you here? Can you take us back to that day and tell us what that felt like driving in the van on the way here? What were you thinking? Um, I was wondering, like, where, like, what, what it would be like here, what the people would be like, who, will, like, just if it was going to be a good environment, like, what kind of things I could do. Stuff like that. Did you, were you scared? Tell me about any feelings about being scared at all. Uh, a little bit, because I, because, you know, you just don't know what to expect. But, uh, yeah, it's just, I mean, look, like at first when you get here, it's, you're just nervous because you don't know how it's going to be like, but then after you get here a while, you kind of learn, start learning how things go. So when you're 15 and you're obviously quite a bit younger than anybody else around you, when you first walk into this unit for the first time, what was the reaction of some of the other guys? Do you remember when you walked into the unit for the first time? Um, yes, it was right after lunch, and uh, I came in with two other people that were here. And uh, we just, we were standing there, and then they told me to go to my cell, which is right next door, and I was by myself. And um, it was just, I was surprised by how, like, how it was, kind of. I was expecting something different, but I was... I was surprised at how big the cell was and like there was like cabinets and stuff like that. So you really, most people would walk in the cell and think, oh my gosh, it's so small, how does anybody live in here? Mm -hmm. so is that because you were used to being in the cell when you were in jail or what? Yeah, the cells in um, county were, didn't have a desk or shelves, so it was a lot different coming here. So. Physically, how is it though? You know, I look and it's, you're 15, you're a teenager, and you sleep on a bunk bed with a simple mattress. I mean, tell me about the uncomfortableness of living in a place like this. Because most teenagers cannot imagine, and I'm sure you could have never imagined ever having to live like this. Yeah, I never, I never could see myself in a place like this. You know, I just, I figured if I got caught doing something bad, it'd just be a slap on the wrist, and then I'd, I'd be out of trouble. But it's, just, it's not like that, you know, because you don't think you can really get in big trouble, but then the next thing you know, you're here. And the uncomfortable level is just like nine or 10, like all the time, because here's where you sleep, like right here, and there's the toilet. You know, it's like that close, and your bunkie could be on the toilet, and you'd be like trying to write a letter or watch TV and you're just, you're like three feet away from this guy you don't even know all the time. And at REC, you're just surrounded by people you don't know. You don't know how they are, what they're gonna do. So it's just, and being away from home 
all that, as soon as you realize, like, as soon as that comes into effect, all that together is just, like, just, like, you can't even imagine on the outside what it would be like. Is missing home one of the worst things of all? Tell me about your thoughts about home. Yeah, I, I definitely miss home the most out of everything. But uh, it's just freedom, really, because you, you're you just able to, any time, you know, just walk, walk out of the house or do whatever, go walk down the hallway right here. You can't. They control when your door opens, when you eat. They tell you when you can sleep, basically. Just they, your whole life is controlled by somebody you don't know. And any time something could have happened. So missing home is definitely a big part. Do you get to talk to your mom or any of family members or anything? What's, do you have visitation from, from anyone or anything? Yeah, there's a there's a visitation phone. You can use the phones out there in the day room. Um, yeah, I call my family and I get visits. And compared to county, it's a lot better the visitation here. But still, it's not the same. You know, you you can only see them for like a couple hours, five hours, three hours, and then you have to sit in a little chair. You can't. You can only hug like. You can only hug them once, or you can't walk around. You have to stay in the chair. So it's really limited, like, what you can do. Was the first time you had a visit when you came here, was that really hard? Was it hard for you to have family members see you in a place like this? Yeah, it was definitely hard knowing that my mom or my dad, you know, they had to come down here, all the way down here to see me. And uh, so that that just makes me want to just try harder and do better and do everything to get out of here faster. How do you, at age 15, even, how do you process in your mind that this is where you're going to be for a while? Do you even think about that or do you try not to think about that? What's, what's the mental process that you go through as a teenager dealing with this? Well, I think of it as, you know, I'm stuck here and there's nothing really I can do about it except get my education, just take all the programs I can. Um, but really, I just look at it as you know, I'm going to do this and try my hardest, and then I'll be out. You know, it's not like I'm in here forever. So you got to look at it as that. You can't, can't give up. Um, what, what was the sentence that the judge gave you? And you, can you take us back to that day in court when you heard that sentence being read? Um, I got... Thirty years to spend five for probation. Uh, good time to twelve and a half. And I was just, I I knew what to expect before then, but then just kind of sunk in like after he said it. And then I knew I was going to be going to DOC like pretty soon. So it was basically, you know, I knew what was going to happen. I just. It was just hard hearing that. How did your family react? Tell me, tell me about your family throughout all this. How have they been? Um, they've been pretty good, as far as I know. Uh, just we kind of all knew what to expect, but uh, I mean, we're I'm just trying my hardest and. Just trying to talk to him as much as I can, just do stuff like that. What would you want other teenagers to know out there that you think maybe they don't have any clue about life inside prison as a teenager? I mean, the thought of a 
15 year old being in prison is a really sobering thing. I think that most kids your age would think that'll never happen to me, but it can. What would you want them to know? And that's definitely how I looked at it when I was out. I just, I never thought I could actually go to like prison. I just thought the worst would be probation or boy school, but like you don't, you don't realize until after the fact that every every decision you make, every choice has a repercussion, whether good or bad. And you just need to keep that in mind because, you know, this can happen to you, you know, because you got to wear a jumpsuit every day. I mean, people don't know much about prison except what they see in movies and stuff like that. But the food's horrible. You got to wear a jumpsuit every day. You only come out of your cell a couple hours every day. You gotta, you gotta be on guard all the time. You don't know what's gonna happen. You, you're away from your friends and family. You just you can't talk to hardly anybody. Um, it's just you. You don't have any freedom. Freedom's the worst part. Do you even at this point remember what freedom was like and just that ability to be able to run outside or go hang with your friends? Do you even, does that seem like it was forever ago or does it almost seem like it was just yesterday? No, it seems, I mean, I just, I, me, myself, I try to, I like to keep things like in perspective, like real life perspective. Like I'm, I've almost been in locked up a year now. And uh, I remember what it's like to be outside, you know, and do those things. And I just, you, you gotta keep that mindset. Like, you know, you're gonna, I'm gonna be able to do them again someday. And soon, hopefully, you just, just gotta keep that mindset. You can't be thinking about negative things. And if you do, you're just gonna, sit in here and destroy yourself every day. Do you feel different now about yourself or this whole situation than you did when you first came in? Do you feel 10 years older today than you did a year ago? Or how do you feel today compared to how you felt the first day you came into Wabash? Um, I definitely feel like I've learned a lot more, um, just like with slang words like I never knew before, just like what people mean when they say certain things. And I've just, I've become a lot wiser than I was when I first got locked up. I mean, I've learned a lot more, but I wish I would have had a wake up call like before this, you know, like because probation, how like teenagers like my age look at it because I know how we look at it. It's just probation, you know, you got to check in once a month, big deal. Like, well, that can easily turn in from probation to this within a day. All you got to do is screw up one time, just walk in a gas station and take something, and the next thing you know, you're in here. So it's really, it really puts, makes you think about everything. And if this isn't a wake-up call, then I mean, you, there nothing basically is. What would you want judges to know before they make a decision to sentence a child to an adult prison? That's a big part of what this show is about, is also getting judges to understand um, what the reality is once they sentence kids like you to adult prisons. If you could talk to a judge, what would you want them to know about the reality of what they, what they sentenced you to? Well, they don't, they may think they know what, you know, goes, goes on, but they really don't. They don't know how, like how we react to the, to being in here. Like, just, I, I would tell them that Like soon as soon as you get here, it's just like in RDC, the the DOC holding place where you come before you come here. Like right there, like it was 
if you're if you're not never been in prison or boy school or nothing before, that's that was scary, like for me even. Because like that first night everybody like there was like four floors and everybody was just like yelling. Like it was so loud in there you couldn't even hear yourself think. And then then you come here and you're in a cell. At night you're just thinking at night when you don't have anything to do, that's really when it gets to you, like you just think like like all the things you could have been doing on the outside, everything that you're missing out on. The judge really doesn't, he, he just thinks that, you know, if we give them this much time, then they'll get out old enough, then they'll be more mature. Well, really, when you spend, you spend five months in here, I've spent five months in county, and if they would have let me out then, that would have been enough wake up call for the rest of my life because so much I've learned just from being in county around everybody talking to me and being around adults all the time. You just, really, they should just, they should, they, sh they could send you here, but like not, not for that long, you know, cause that's, that's your life. You know, if the judge got sentenced to 30 years, you know, he'd be, he'd be freaking out. He wouldn't know what to do. Cause this is like your whole life. I mean, even I'm gonna get out and still have most of my life ahead of me, but it's, I'm still missing a lot of stuff. How did your friends react to your sentence and, and knowing that you were going to come here? I can't imagine, I've got a son your age, and I can't imagine him seeing one of his friends go through that. What was their reaction? Do you even know? Um, you can start by saying my friends, whatever. My friends, they just, they didn't know really, they didn't, they couldn't believe it when they first heard, but then after that, they just, they just said, uh, like, they missed me, you know, they just, they couldn't believe that I was in here, you know, because I'm, I was with them every day, hanging out, doing whatever, and then it went from that to all of a sudden I'm gone, like, I'm just not even heard of me for a couple of months. So for them, I don't, I don't really know what they were thinking, but I mean, it's just like you, like someone that you're around every day, like you just lost them, like you know them well, and then you just, they're just gone. Can they write you or visit you, or how does that work with other kids your age? Um, they can write, like anybody can write you, but uh, like visits, you have to have, you only have two, certain, like two forms for uh, like people other than your family. So then uh, it's just, it really, they can't really visit you. Do you ever write them? Yeah, I've, I've wrote several. I'm right, I write a couple friends like right now. Is there ever a point, or is there often a point, where you sit and think to yourself, um, I wish I could just rewind all of this and start all over and never have gotten into this situation? Do you let yourself go there? Oh, yeah, every day. Every day I just think, man, if I just would have... I just would have, you know, like, just done one thing different or just every day I think about going back and doing something different. But really, I mean, it's a waste of time to do that because you can't. Once it's done, it's done. There's no going back. Do you think, you know, so many kids, and we've been filming with kids, juveniles in the system for about 13 years, and so many kids say, you know, when it happened, just it just happened. It happened so fast. I'm not an adult. You know, the, the kid's brain just maybe doesn't process things for as long a period of time as an adult's brain does. And it just, it, it happened so fast that I don't even really remember it. Do you kind of feel the same way that it just, it almost wasn't you doing it? It was... Did you feel kind of like an out-of-body experience? Can you explain it all? 
what that whole thing was like? Yeah, it definitely felt like that a little bit because, like, afterwards, I, I couldn't even believe myself, like, what happened. You know, I couldn't believe what, uh, like, how, how could I possibly be in this situation? You know, I went from, like, A's and B's student to, like, in, in jail. Like, I didn't even know what to think at the time. So it's definitely like that, yeah. Did you feel a sense of panic? Did you feel like you wanted to panic? Yeah, the first eight days I was in a juvenile hall, like kind of like a boys' school, and I just didn't even know what to do, like because my lawyer at the time was saying I was going to get more time than I actually got, and I was thinking like, like my life's basically over, you know, like I don't even know what to do. Do you think it would have helped if they would have kept you in the juvenile system versus waving you to adult? How do you feel about the whole issue of waving young kids to adult court? I don't think it's a good idea because um, just because we like soon as soon as you get here, it's just like you don't know what to do. You don't know. Um, like you're just exposed to things that, like you, a fifteen-year-old shouldn't be exposed to. Well, yeah. Well, you just don't know how to handle that situation. What would you want people to know about you <clears throat> that they have no clue about? the person you feel like you really are compared to the person that maybe they've read about. What would you want people to know about Colt Lundy? Um, like on the news, they made it sound like I was just like a, just horrible, you know, like cold blooded. But really that's, I mean, my crime might seem like that, but really, I mean, I can't really explain it. Like what, what happened, you know, but I just want them to know that like, I'm not the person that they think, they may think I am from reading something. Like I'm way different than that. And especially from spending so much time in here, like I can't even imagine like kids like younger than me coming in here. Cause so really I just wanna like help other people so they don't get in this situation that I'm in. So what would you want to tell other kids about how to not end up in a situation like this? Is there anything you can say to them that you think would, that you wish somebody might have said to you? Really, like they, my parents and teachers and everything told me like stop and think, you know? Well, every kid gets told that, but really they don't even use it. They don't even think about it, but what? Sometimes you just need to sit there by yourself, have some time by yourself to just, just think about just life, like what, what you want to do, you know, like you can't just like live, you actually got to think about your life. You can't think about, oh, my first car, well, that's good and all, but really you got to really just need to pay attention to what you're doing. So had you had a few juvenile offenses beforehand, so you kind of, you, you had been in detention before, did you have any sort of experience with the system at all before you landed here? Or just I, a was, I was never in juvenile hall before this, but I had been put on probation one time. So um, I know that um, that Paul had been with you. Do you think about Paul at all, or any? Do you think about anything beyond your own kind of case and getting through the day, or? Oh yeah, I think about. I really don't even think about myself. Like I just think about other people. Like I'm just really like a person, like that type of person that, like, is always, like, like if you don't, you know, like, I'll give you the shirt off my back like that type of person. I've just always been that way. 
So yeah, I hope I hope Paul's okay. But I mean, he really. I hope he realized what I realized. And other than that, just he's surrounded by decent people. And final question, then I'll let you go back downstairs. If right now, if you if you had one wish. What would it be? Ultimately, what would your one wish be right now if somebody granted you a wish? <laughs> um, just, to, just to be free. Just out of here. Even just like if they let me walk out of the gates right now, I just walk home. I'd just be so happy.